One time a neighbor and I, when we were in high school, we went fishing and we were walking along this embankment that was high above a creek. And we were just walking, going from one fishing spot to the next spot, but we had to go up high to get around to the other fishing spot. And all of a sudden he was just gone. <laughs> the ground under him had given out. He just, I looked over there and he was sliding down the embankment, bumping on stuff. He tumbled and boom, he ended up in the edge of the creek. And I was like, I ran down there. I was like, oh my God. I said, are you hurt? <laughs> and he said, nothing but my pride. He said, just my pride got destroyed. Well, I'm here thinking today in my garden about that story and about that event. And I kind of know how he feels. Let me tell you about it. These are my quick pick cow peas. I planted a, a good little stretch of 20 foot here and then I skipped a little space where I had some tomatoes and all growing before that I had pulled up and I grew 20 feet more down here and they're double row planted. And uh, they look okay when you first look at them. They look all right. They look like there's lots of green growth, lots of vining. They, they look all right when you're first looking at them. But the trouble is under the hood. When you start looking deep, there are, first of all, wasps everywhere. I don't know if they're leaf-footed bugs or wasps, but they're everywhere. And they just decimate the pods once they get going. A lot of the pods are tiny. A lot of the pods never develop any seeds in the pod before they just wither away. A lot of, lot of the pods are just so tiny and so under, undeveloped. And uh, it's been this way this whole year with my cow peas. It's been this way this whole year. And they turn purple way before they're supposed to. They don't stay green very long. You'll see some healthy pods. You'll see some healthy pods every now and then. However, these are supposed to turn more purple. They're supposed to get more developed before you pick them. And a lot of times, uh, they're gone before then. There's just nothing you can do about it. I have a lot of mildew on a lot of my pods. You walk out here after a rain, the next morning, they're all mildewed. They're done. They're not salvageable. And uh, it's been a problem this whole year. The buds are just set upon. Whenever they do have little buds on the flowers, they're just set upon. And it's not your normal pollination. It's, it's wasp. And I think they are really affecting the pollination of my cow peas. And so um, just not sure what to do about it. Uh, they dry up. They don't develop seeds. They're just not viable. Very seldom do I really walk by and see a developed pod and I'm able to pick that pod and use them. So these are more and more of just the, the pods that are not developed. I could film this for an hour. It is so disheartening to walk down these rows and see this. These are my speckled purple hole peas, same situation. I've had a time with them the whole year and I've probably not harvested more than a little half of a quart Ziploc bag full of these peas. It has been so disappointing. And when you see the growth of the plant, it is so unusual that you're not getting anything that you can really use. It's just dried up, moldy pods everywhere, everywhere you look. One of the other varieties that I planted this year and that I'm pretty proud of as far as the growth are these. It's the pidget peas. They're a native of Louisiana. They seem to be doing better than the regular bush type cow peas. As you can see, there's a lot of growth on them, a lot of vining. These just took off. They grew up the Hortonova netting. I wasn't sure if they were just a bush or a vining type, but I'm glad I had that netting there because they're definitely growing up it. However, the same as with the other uh, beans, you start looking under the hood, you start seeing problems. And um, the pods, are they're coming on the, the plant. They're coming on the plant. There's some healthy ones. However, it just starts deteriorating after that. These wasps have inundated these plants. Um, they're immature looking. A lot of them are just not getting to full development. I'm even having some bugs eat on some of the pods on this plant and um, on this variety. And so far, I've probably only been able to harvest about 
three pods that have gotten to full maturity. The rest of them, when you go to, to harvest them, you think they're okay because of the color, but then when you open them up, they have just mushy, brown, uh, stung up uh, peas in there. And you just can't, uh, you can't eat that. You can't do anything with that. I don't want to save that. And, uh, and just, you know, also all the other little bugs that are getting after them. So it's just been a, a time. So I hope you understand that to not even be able to grow a good cowpea this year has just been humiliating. <laughs> it's just been a lesson in humility that I'm having to go through because you just, you look back and you're like, what did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? I'm not a perfect gardener. I don't know everything. Believe me, if I knew everything, I wouldn't spend so much time on other people's channels, watching them grow. I would, I would just know you know, because I had been doing it for 40 years or something, but that's not true. However, I do know a good bit and I have successfully grown things like cow peas for two or three years now. I've successfully grown corn. And yet this year I had a terrible time with corn. One variety that I planted early, the candy corn, I did get corn out of it. However, the wind blew it over right at the end and I had to harvest it kind of half blown over. It was already drying on the, the stalk, so I had to hurry up and get it out so that I could just cut it off the cob. Bugs had gotten to it after the wind blew it over. It was a mess. However, I can't sit here and say that was because I grew it in any way that was wrong. It was because that wind just took it out. But the cow peas and all of that stuff, it's like, come on. <laughs> come on, that's my go-to. That's my go-to. You know, cow peas, come on. But yet, this has been a horrible year, a horrible year. If it wasn't for the zipper cream peas that kind of hung in there, even through the heat, um, they didn't do great, but I just had so daggum many of them that I ended up with a couple of gallon Ziplocs full of them. But every other variety I grew, purple hull, black eyed peas, quick pick cream peas, and now even my pigeon peas, no, a serving or two, you know, is all I'm getting out of those. So that's kind of disheartening. Well, hi everybody, I'm back. It's just me and the love bugs out here in my garden today. If you see them flying around, there everyone goes right there. Please excuse me, they're everywhere and there's nothing I can do about them. I have a whole new perspective this morning. I'm so glad. I was a little bit down about my cow peas yesterday. I was a little bit down about the failures of my garden and had a little incident last night with my grandkids and it just put everything in a whole new perspective. And before I went to bed, I made a list last night of my failures in the garden, some things that bothered me, think, well, things I didn't like too much, things that bothered me. But then I went on the front page of my notebook and I made a list of all my successes. And I wanna focus on those too. I don't wanna just get caught up in the cow peas and the things that didn't do good this year in my garden, the things that disappointed me. It's just funny how we always tend to let the things that disappointed us be the bigger thing in our mind. We let it try to be the thing that decides whether we had a success this year or whether we didn't. And last night when I was compiling these lists of duds, I called them, and chicka chicka bow wows, the good ones, the good uh, crops that came out good, that's what I nicknamed them last night. I was like, I had a lot of good ones. I had a lot of good chicka chicka bow wows. I didn't have a whole, whole lot of duds. I just was letting the duds rule my life. I was letting the duds make me feel like an inadequate gardener. And while I have a lot to learn, a lot of this was not my fault. I can't control the weather. I can't control the rain. I cannot stand out here at night and try to keep mildew off of a cow pee. I just can't do it. If I'm gonna have rain, go to bed and wake up and a cow pee has got mildew all over it, I can't control that. That is just nature. I did the best I could in my garden. I did the best I could to take care of my soil this year. I have done chop and drop the last few years. I hauled in a lot of money's worth of organic soil to mix in with this this year. I have tried to get bad things out, keep good things in, use some fertilizers, just do the best I could for my garden. And if some things just couldn't make it this year because of a flash drought, that intense heat that just fried some of my crops in the in the garden there was nothing I could do about it there just wasn't the rains that 
come heavily for days and days and days, and then it stops and dries up again for days and days and days. I can't control that. I really can't. All I can do is the best I can do. So last night, I just kind of put this all in perspective. And let me just tell you a little story about how I came to change my frame of mind last night. My daughter offered to come mow for me. It's been a long week. <laughs> my son has been very, very busy, started his college. And so my daughter said, you know, I want to get out and mow right now. They're not able to mow a yard right now because they're staying in some temporary uh, living situations. So she said, I'm going to come over and see if I can mow your yard. I feel like doing it. I said, hey, I'm all for that. <laughs> so she came and my son-in-law was weed eating. And so I had the kids inside. I had their three-year-old boy and the one-year-old boy. And it was so funny. My little three-year-old uh, grandson found a little Nerf gun in the closet. I have a whole closet of toys that I keep for them under my stairs and they go to it the minute they get to my house every time. Well, he found the little Nerf gun and there's like one lone Nerf bullet we could find. So he had the one bullet in the gun and he can't cock it though. It's a little hard thing to pull on the bottom. So Mama would cock the little Nerf gun and he decided there was a rhinoceros in my kitchen. So he would turn around and go with that little gun and shoot that rhinoceros in the kitchen. And the bullet would just go hit a wall or whatever, hit a bar stool or whatever. Well, my little one-year-old grandson, when he would hear the bullet go off and he would hear my grandson say, I got it, you know, the little one-year-old would just drop whatever toys he had in his hands and he would just start clapping and he would smile. He was so proud of his brother for shooting the rhino. And he would turn around to me and clap towards me like, Mama, are you watching? Did you see what he just did? He just shot the rhino. And I would clap, you know, I would say, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, that was good. Bubba got him, you know. And and uh, so after a while, I mean, this went on forever. I probably uh, did the gun for him for an hour and a half. <laughs> but after a while, the one-year-old got tired of doing all the clapping. But he did it probably about 20 times before he wore out. And... I was just so amazed. I thought to myself, if I could have a cheerleader like this that just watched everything I did in my garden and just clapped for me <laughs> every time I weeded something, every time I put a seed in the ground, every time I, I did anything that would make this garden grow, if I had somebody that was just cheering me on like that, uh, I would never, ever, ever come out to this garden and feel depressed. I would never, ever do it. And so I'm just taking his little spirit into my life this morning. And I'm going to show you a list of the things that I'm proud of. <laughs> the things that, that I just think went good in my garden this year. And some of the duds, I'll read them all to you real quick just so you'll have perspective. But some of the duds, I'm just going to let them go. I'm not going to worry about them anymore. 2022 was just not the year for some of these crops. And some of them actually grew. <laughs> I, they actually grew, they were successful, but they were just such a disappointment that I feel like I had completely wasted my time. But nothing's actually a waste of time. We live and we learn. One of the biggest duds was my Mosby Prolific Corn, which is a corn that I love. I've grown before, I, I love it. It's some of the best heirloom corn you can grow. It grows huge, 14, 16 inch long cobs that are just so full of beautiful white corn. Not this year, not this year. I got two or three little terrible looking cobs off of 280 row feet of corn. It completely dried up and was gone during that flash drought type situation. Done. Gone. Made me feel horrible. Made me feel like what could I have done? There was nothing I could have done. It's gone. Another dud for me was the Florida high bush eggplants. Now they're probably delicious, but I'm going to tell you what those things are like little bitty grenades they have uh, the little cap part that goes on the top is so sharp it's like harvesting knives i cut myself on them they it, and the eggplants were not huge but the little cap that went on the top came down over the eggplant and had so many little pokey things on it that it was horrible to harvest. I would reach my arm up in there just to see if I had anything and would come back with my arms cut up. I have my arms cut up today because I weeded a rose bush yesterday. But these things you could keep on your nightstand and throw them at a person coming in your house if you wanted to. It would, it would be something you could use as a weapon at night. I'll never grow them again. I just didn't like them. I can't imagine 
um, how many injuries I would get if I took them inside <laughs> and tried to always peel them to eat them, and to, to slice them, to fry them or whatever. It was terrible and I will never grow those again. I just didn't like them. Another dud for me was the Turkish orange eggplants. They are beautiful. They're small, they're small, about the size of a tennis ball, it says. If they stayed that way, that'd be great, but they got smaller and smaller and smaller. They say harvest them when they're just turning orange. Don't wait till they turn completely orange, which is when they're beautiful, because they get a little more um, tart that way to harvest them when they're just turning orange. Well, they started just turning orange or turning orange and got smaller and smaller and smaller. They went from being a tennis ball to a golf ball, to a cherry tomato. <laughs> I'm not picking a cherry tomato size eggplant and doing anything with it. And that doesn't count, you know, your little stem area. So to me, they were like the incredible shrinking eggplants. <laughs> I just didn't have time for that. I just, I, that's it. I'm not growing them anymore. Well, I have seeds. I, I'm never gonna say never. If I get hungry enough, I'll grow anything. But for right now, they're gone. Whoo, love bugs. For right now, they're gone. Another one, there were duds, were all my watermelons, all of them. Um, my black diamond watermelons set tons and tons of fruit, but they never fully developed. They never did. I think they were doomed from the beginning because they just got scorched in a lot of this heat. And even though they did recover and set some fruits, they never fully developed. Um, I tried just waiting and waiting and waiting, and then they started rotting in the field. So they were duds. My Wilson sweet watermelons, um, they were doing better, and then the deer decided, oh, look at those, they're good, so they're gonna eat those. But it's, it happens. Uh, I did have a little deer issue this year and never had had that before, so I'm just gonna have to figure out what to do about that. Another dud for me was the momentum bush beans. I planted a long 95 foot or so row of momentum bush beans, and they all came up. Uh, well, they didn't all come up. I ended up having to reseed again so the germination rate was terrible. But I reseeded and then they all came up and I had a really good uh, stand of bush beans. And what I noticed was for me, maybe not for everybody else, but for me, they set pods. I was able to kind of pick through them one good time and then that was it. They started just turning to mush. They started being uh, something I wouldn't want to pick and harvest. And I was so disappointed in them. I just couldn't believe that, you know, I couldn't pick off of those bush beans at least two or three times before they petered out. They just were, to me, a big disappointment. That was a complete waste of my row feet. That's just my opinion. But let me get to the good things because we forget about the good things. We forget about the things that did do okay and that we did do good with. And here's some of mine. There was probably more I forgot, but I found enough of them to where I'm like, girl, you know, you're okay. <laughs> Quit whining about the things that went wrong and focus on the things that went right. I, Atkinson tomatoes. Atkinson tomatoes were developed to grow in the heat in the South. So I did, I started them. They had great germination in my seed starting trays. When I put them out in the ground, they had great stay in power. They didn't die off once I transplanted them. And they ended up putting out so many tomatoes that it just looked like bunches and bunches of apples on all my tomato plants before they started turning red. And then when they started turning red, they were the ones that were pretty much my cash crop. They did uh, so well that I had a counter full of Atkinson tomatoes every time I harvested. So I can't complain about them. I was very proud of them. I also grew the Italian heirloom tomatoes. And while I only had just a few bushes, I wish I'd have had more because I was just trying out a few little different kinds of tomatoes. So I didn't have tons of plants for everything, but I wish I'd have had more because they did wonderful. I encourage everybody to grow the Italian heirloom tomatoes. They were a large tomato, a little bit ox heart shaped, and they tasted delicious. And they just kept putting out and putting out and putting out. They were one of my last tomatoes to just kind of peter out. So I would highly recommend those and I consider those a success. The Mexico Midget Cherry Tomatoes, I bragged on those in several videos and they were like the gift that wouldn't quit giving. They did great in germination, great in my seed trays, great when I planted them and they just kept going and going and going. I finally just pulled them out of the ground with tomatoes still on them because it was just so hot and a lot of my fruit on them wasn't um, as good anymore, but they just kept bearing. 
um, I just got tired of them. I got I got tired of a lot of the different things in my garden, so I just started kind of pulling things out and trying to regroup for the fall. So they were a casualty of that. However, they did wonderful. I would recommend everybody get seeds. I got mine from Seed Savers Exchange. I don't know where else you could get them, but if you can find the seeds, I'd recommend you get them. As far as cucumbers go, I just had a great year with cucumbers. My Bayad Alphas did great. My Slicers did great. Uh, my Ashley Cucumbers did great. My Long Green Improved did great. They did wonderful. And my Dragon's Egg did great. All of those gave me lots and lots of cucumbers. So many of them that I just didn't know what to do with them anymore. Make pickles. Uh, after a while, you have oh, too many pickles. So I was just giving them away as I could uh, and selling them. I did sell a lot of them. I had great luck with Cocazelle Zucchini gray zucchini. They're called gray zucchini, but they're really a beautiful light green zucchini with some dark green speckles on them. They're beautiful. I had great luck with the crookneck squash. I've had great luck with okra, all the okra I planted. Um, it hadn't been like gangbusters, tons and tons per plant, but because I have so many plants, I've been able to harvest a lot of it. One of the things that I put on my Chicka Bow Wow list, my little list that I'm celebrating about, the list that I'm proud of, is the Ford Hook Gym cantaloupe. Now that might seem a little odd because if you've watched my videos, you know that the deer came in. Before these were ready to be viable, before I could even harvest some to eat at all, the deer came in, ate all my vines, and ate some of my cantaloupes and threw the rest of them, <laughs> threw the rest of them in a pile and just left them piled in my dirt on one end of my garden. The deer did all of that over the course of a couple of nights. So you might say, why is that something you're proud of? Well. I'm proud of them because they were doing good. I can't help the deer. I can't help the deer. They were doing good. I can say I'm proud of it because I brought in a lot of horse manure from a friend of ours. They burn off the manure and put, you know, so it has ashes in it and they put wood chips in it. And I was able to go over there and get buckets and buckets and buckets of it and spread it in those areas where I was growing my melons. And these Ford Hook gems, while they were slow getting started, they hit their stride and they came up and they were doing really good in that soil. And each Ford Hook gem plant had seven or eight Ford Hook gem melons on it. I was, I was so excited. I was so, that would have been a good cash crop for one thing to sell to people. I know I could have sold the cantaloupes easily, but also my husband eats them. So it was gonna be saving us five bucks a melon that I'm having to go to the store and still buy to this day. I would have had some of those melons. I could have chopped some and froze some and done all kinds of things. And they were on their way, but the deer got them, but they were on their way. And I had them growing good and I'm proud of them. And I would definitely grow them again. I don't remember if I have any seeds left and I wasn't able to save seeds from the ones that were there because they weren't viable yet. They weren't um, seed saving quality. So that could be the down part of it, but the actual growing of them, I mastered and I was able to do good and I would definitely grow those again. I love those Ford Hook Gym cantaloupes. The last few things on my list are just peppers in general, peppers. I had peppers, peppers, peppers. I started my plants from seed. I had never done that with pepper plants before. I had great luck with germination. I had great luck growing them out of the seed trays and transplanting them. Most of them made it through the transplant and then they just took off like gangbusters. Probably my most successful one was Cuban L peppers, but also the bull nose bell, the sheep nose pimento, Jimmy Nardello's. They just kept coming and coming and coming. Not a Pino's. Um, I cannot complain about anything with my pepper season this year. And I have never had good luck with peppers before. And this year I, I just had more than I knew what to do with. So I don't wanna let that success go by and only focus on the failures with cow peas and corn when I had a dadgum good pepper season that I'm proud of. So the last two things on my list that did really, really good were Cherokee wax beans. I had a good stand of those down in my lower garden. I'm, do I'm dodging love bugs. I had a good stand of those down in my lower garden and um, they did great. I, unlike the momentum beans, I was able to roll along there in my little sitting cart here that I sit on and roll and I was able to pick beans over probably a two week period out of those Cherokee wax beans. So they were great. I can't complain about those. The ideal market and the Blue Lake pole beans that were growing right here behind me on some of these tea posts, they did wonderful. They, I ended up letting some of them, I thought, go to seed, but that was also during the time everything was getting burned up. So they got fried. I didn't end up saving 
any seeds from them. So that was a failure. But the actual beans themselves, I ended up harvesting a lot from, canned them, so I was very happy. So I just wanted to end this video, instead of being down about cow peas, instead of being down about things I can't control, I wanted to lift you up. I wanted to lift you up. You can do it, you can grow it, You've got to look at your garden as a whole and just find the things that are working and focus on those things that there's nothing you can do about. You cannot control the weather. You can kind of control your watering. You can kind of control your covering things and things like that. But there are some situations where none of that even works. It's just a matter of it wasn't their time and that's okay. I have had no problems growing cow peas the last few years. They have been my go-to crop. They just weren't this year. They just weren't. And so I'm gonna have to let it go. I'm just gonna have to let it go. The ones that I did harvest, I'm just gonna have to rejoice in that and be happy about it and move on and I'll get more later. I have tons of cow pea seeds of all varieties and I know they'll grow good. And it's a whole new ball game when we move up to our new property at some point, whenever we get up there, it's a whole new ball game. It's different soil. I'm gonna find a lot of things that might grow great there that didn't grow great here or vice versa. And it's a whole new learning ball game. Don't focus on the bad things, focus on the good things. If you get down, just go look and see what you got in your freezer, what you were able to put up. Every little bit counts, every little bit is important. And if you end up where you had a bumper crop of so much, just a bumper crop, well, share it with people, share it with your family. If it's more than you needed, just share it with people. They'll appreciate it. This is Lainey with Camp Joy Farms. I hope you enjoy your weekend. It's coming up on us quick, your Labor Day weekend. Be careful, be safe. Take care of your family and join me again later for another video and we'll see what's going on in the garden later. I'm, I am planning a lot of things and hopefully some of this will be coming up soon and we'll have some new stuff growing. Thank you so much. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye-bye.